Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to create a checklist. I'll just show you how my checklist works. Obviously, I click in these check boxes, but what it does is change the background color of the row to show that it's completed, but it's doing a percentage tally down here of the tasks that are completed. So as I check these check boxes, this tally increases. Okay, let's see how this can be done. Now at the time of recording, which is in April 2024, Excel does not currently contain a check box button. Now, if you're in the Insiders program, then you will find a check box button on the insert tab of your ribbon. I don't have it, but it will be somewhere over here. If you're watching this video in the future, you may find a check box button on the insert tab, in which case this process is slightly less involved. Now to use this method, you're going to need to show the developer tab on the ribbon and it doesn't show by default. So what you need to do is right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon. And then you need to check this box down here, developer and click on OK. Now, once you're on the developer tab, you need to look for this insert button, click on it. And then under form controls, you want to look for this checkbox form control, select it and then click into the cell that you want the checkbox to appear in. You don't need the text against the checkbox, so you can just delete that. I'm doing that with the delete key on my keyboard. And then I'm going to resize this container so it fits nicely within the cell. So once you've done that, click outside the cell and then click back in the cell. And then you're going to use this little green square to copy the checkbox down the rest of the column. So just drag it down and you'll get a checkbox in each cell. Now it's a bit annoying that this checkbox isn't aligned with the bottom of the cell as these others are. So you might want to fiddle around with the position of this checkbox. So to do that, what you would do is right click in the cell. So then you can use the down arrow on your keyboard or the up arrow to just reposition that checkbox. Now this checkbox here, I don't actually need. So what I can do is right click on it and then go to cut. So your next step, once you've got your checkboxes, is to link each checkbox to an adjacent cell. And you'll see why that's important. Now to do that, you right click on your checkbox, you go to Format Control, and you need to be on the Control tab in this dialog box. And where you can see Cell Link, click in that box, and then click in an adjacent cell. So I'm going to select Cell C2. Now you'll see how this works. If I click outside the cell and then click back in the checkbox, can you see I get a true if the checkbox is ticked and a false if it isn't. So I need to do that same thing for each of these checkboxes. I'll do the second one with you. So it's right click, format control, control, cell link, and then click in an adjacent cell. Click on OK. So I fast forward the video to the point where I've done the same thing to all the other checkboxes. So then I can just go through and tick my checkboxes just to make sure that they are working. And you can see that they all are. So I'll just untick them. And the next thing we're going to look at is how to get the row to automatically change color if the checkbox is ticked. Now to do this, I'm going to select this first area of tasks. So including the task name and the cells that contain the checkboxes. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab on the ribbon, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now the rule or the formula that we're going to write is very simple. We just need to say equals C2. Now the reason that I'm pointing at C2 is because that contains the true or false value. And if this value is true in C2, it's going to apply the format that I specify down here. Now you may wonder why I've selected C2 and not all of the cells that will potentially contain the word true. Well, the reason I've only selected C2 is because I'm writing a rule for the active cell. And the active cell is the first cell I selected. You can see it has a white background versus a gray background that the other selected cells currently have. 
So this rule then gets copied down and across the other cells that I've selected. Now, at the moment, you can see there are $2 in this cell address, and that's created an absolute reference. Now, I need to get rid of one of those dollars, and it's actually the second dollar. Now, this means that the rule always applies to the value in column C, but as the rule is copied down these rows, it refers to the relevant value in column C, so C3, C4, C5, and C6. The C cannot change, but the 2 can. So now I need to set my format, so I go to the Format button, and I'm going to choose this orange background. Click on OK, and then on OK again, and now it should work. So if I tick this checkbox, I get that nice orange background on that row, and it will work for the other rows. Now we need to do the same thing down here, but what we can do is select the first cell that we've applied the conditional formatting to, go up to the Format Painter, which is on the Home tab, and then just select all the cells that we want to apply the conditional formatting to in this area of the worksheet. And now it will work just as it did in the first area. So now let's deal with this completed area. We want to work out the percentage of the tasks that are completed. So the first thing we need to do is count the number of tasks that have been completed. Now to do this, I'm going to use the sum function and I'm going to add up two ranges, this range here, comma, and this range here. Close the bracket and press enter. Now I get a zero now because these are not numbers. I want to convert the trues to ones and the falses to zeros. And the way I can do that is by putting two minus signs in front of both of these ranges. So now it will add up the trues that appear in this column. So I then need to divide this number by the total number of tasks in this list. And to do that, I can divide by the result of the count a function. So the count a function will count the number of cells within a specified range that contain a value, any values. So basically if the cells are not blank. So I'm going to select that part of the list, comma, and then this part of the list. Close the bracket and press enter. Then I need to format this as a percentage value. So all I need to do is click on this little button, percent style. So if I tick another box and another one, you can see this continues to recalculate for me. Now, what I'm also going to do is get a little bar that fills this cell as we mark these tasks as completed. Now, I've got a border around this cell already. If you don't know how to do that, then just select the cell and then choose this thick outside border. But then I'm going to apply conditional formatting to this cell. So with that cell selected, I go back up to conditional formatting and I'm going to go to data bars and then more rules. Now where it says minimum and currently the type is automatic, change that to number and leave the value as zero. And then where it says maximum, change automatic to number and set the number to one. Then I'm going to select the same color that I'm using for these rows, this orange color and then I'm going to click on OK. And that's all there is to it. So if I tick or untick these boxes, you can see it begins to fill this cell with that bar. Now the last touch really is just to hide column C. We don't need to see these trues and falses. These are only here for the workings behind the conditional formatting and this calculation here. So I can right click on this C at the top of the column, and then choose hide and I'm done. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.